Have you ever wondered about the deadliest crash in Ivory Coast history? A somber question, no doubt. But it takes us back to the turn of the millennium, to an unfortunate event that shook the aviation world to its core. Let's rewind to the 30th of January, 2000. The stage is set for Kenya Airways Flight 431, an international passenger service that was scheduled to fly from Abidjan to Lagos and then on to Nairobi. The carrier was none other than the Kenyan national airline, Kenya Airways, a name synonymous with African skies. The aircraft in question was an Airbus A310-300, a workhorse of the skies, trusted by airlines worldwide. But on this fateful day, this reliable machine would become a harbinger of disaster. Shortly after takeoff from Felix Upue Boigny International Airport, Abidjan, the aircraft met with catastrophe. In the blink of an eye, Flight 431 crashed into the sea off the Ivory Coast. The sequence of events was shocking and swift, leaving no time for the crew or passengers to comprehend the gravity of the situation. In total, there were 179 souls on board, a mix of hopeful travelers, weary business people, and excited tourists, each with a story to tell, a life left behind. The aftermath of the crash was a grim testament to the destructive power of aviation disasters. Of the 179 people on board, only 10 survived, forever marked by the harrowing experience. The rest, a staggering 169 lives, were lost to the sea, leaving behind a void that could never be filled. But the tragedy didn't stop there. The crash of Kenya Airways Flight 431 didn't just claim lives, it also claimed records of the worst kind. It became the deadliest crash involving the Airbus A310. The Ivory Coast, a nation known for its vibrant culture and picturesque landscapes, was now home to its deadliest aviation disaster. This crash remains the deadliest involving the Airbus A310 and the deadliest in Ivory Coast history. A dark chapter in the annals of aviation, a stark reminder of the peril that can lurk in the skies. Now let's delve into the details of the aircraft and the crew. The aircraft at the heart of our story is an Airbus A310-304, bearing the registration 5YBEN. Fondly christened the Harem B Star, it was an integral part of Kenya Airways fleet since September 1986. This Airbus was powered by two GECF 680C2A2 turbofan engines and had logged over 58,000 flight hours at the time of the accident. Now, turning our attention to the men behind the controls. The flight was commanded by Captain Paul Muthi, a seasoned aviator at the age of 44. He had amassed over 11,000 flying hours, including 1,664 hours on the Airbus A310. Not only was he an A310 pilot since August 1986, but he also held ratings for Boeing 737, 300, Boeing 737, 200, Fokker 50, Fokker 27, and various small aircraft testament to his versatility and proficiency. Beside Captain Muthi sat First Officer Lazaro Mutumbi Muli, aged 43. Muli, the pilot flying on the accident flight, had over 7,000 hours of flight time under his belt, with 5,768 of them on the Airbus A310. Both pilots were well acquainted with Abidjan Airport, having performed four landings and four takeoffs on the same aircraft type there. The ill-fated flight originated in Nairobi, destined for Abidjan with a stopover in Lagos. This route was popular among Nigerians who frequently travelled to Dubai for duty-free shopping. However, on that fateful day, poor weather conditions and Hamatan winds blowing southwards from the Sahara resulted in unusually hazy skies over Lagos. This led to the suspension of all incoming flights at Lagos Airport, and consequently, the flight proceeded directly to Abidjan after being held over Lagos. After a three-hour layover, the aircraft took off for Lagos at 2,108 HRS GMT. Little did the crew know, within moments of takeoff, their routine flight would turn into a nightmare. Despite the crew's extensive experience and flying hours, the unexpected happened. What was the intended journey of this ill-fated flight? Kenya Airways Flight 431 was initially set to embark on an international passenger service from Nairobi to Abidjan with a stopover in Lagos. This route was a popular choice for many Nigerians traveling to Dubai for duty-free shopping. However, as is often the case with air travel, 
The original plan was subject to the unpredictable whims of Mother Nature. On that fateful day, the Hamatan winds, a dry and dusty trade wind that blows from the Sahara Desert, were unusually strong. These winds created a thick haze over Lagos that reduced visibility to a dangerous level. As a result, all incoming flights to Lagos Airport were halted, including our flight. With the original flight path now obstructed, the decision was made to reroute the flight directly to Abidjan. This wasn't a decision made lightly. Such changes can impact fuel calculations, passenger comfort, and crew work hours. However, safety is always the paramount concern in aviation, and in this instance, the decision to avoid the hazardous conditions in Lagos was considered the safest course of action. So, after an unexpected three-hour layover, the aircraft, carrying 179 souls, took off for Abidjan at 2108 hours, Greenwich Mean Time. The crew, experienced and well-versed in their roles, were prepared for the journey ahead, despite the change in flight path and the challenges it presented. But as we know, even the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. Just seconds after takeoff, a sequence of events unfolded that would ultimately seal the fate of Flight 431. Yet, in those final moments, the crew remained steadfast, committed to their duty to safeguard the passengers and the aircraft to the very end. Despite the change in flight path, the crew was prepared for the journey ahead. What happened in the final moments before the crash? This question has haunted the aviation world since the tragic event of Kenya Airways Flight 431. Let's delve into the sequence of events that sealed the fate of this ill-fated flight. After a three-hour layover, the aircraft took off for Lagos at eight minutes past nine in the evening, Greenwich Mean Time. In the first few seconds of flight, the first officer requested the landing gear to be retracted. However, something went wrong. The stall warning reverberated through the cockpit, but the landing gear remained down. Reacting promptly, the crew put the aircraft into a controlled descent. The first officer, amidst the chaos, asked Captain Muthi to silence the stall warning. Their attention was soon seized by another alarm, the Ground Proximity Warning System, or GPWS. It blared briefly, warning them of their dangerously close proximity to the ground. However, it was cut off abruptly by another warning from the radio altimeter. Next came the master warning. This was the final alarm, indicating that the aircraft was overspeeding. The situation was escalating rapidly, spiraling out of control. Captain Murthy tried to regain control, shouting, go up, but it was too late. The aircraft was descending too quickly to recover. In the end, Kenya Airways Flight 431 met its tragic fate, crashing into the Atlantic Ocean, just over a mile east of the airport, off the Ivory Coast. The impact was so severe that the airframe was completely destroyed. The crash took the lives of 169 people, marking it as the deadliest crash involving an Airbus A310, the deadliest in Ivory Coast history, and the first fatal crash for Kenya Airways. The tragic crash of Kenya Airways Flight 431 remains a cautionary tale in the history of aviation. It serves as a grim reminder of the thin line between safety and disaster, and the crucial role of effective communication and decision-making in the face of a crisis. What was the aftermath of this tragic event? The immediate aftermath of Kenya Airways Flight 431's crash was a scene of chaos and devastation. The Atlantic Ocean, once a symbol of serenity, was transformed into a grim graveyard for the majority of the 179 souls on board. Yet, in this bleak landscape, hope flickered as 10 survivors were pulled from the wreckage by courageous local fishermen and international rescue teams. In the days and weeks that followed, the crash site became a hive of activity, as investigators from Ivory Coast, Kenya, France and the US worked tirelessly to piece together the final moments of Flight 431. Amidst the debris and loss, they sought answers, not only for the grieving families, but also for the wider aviation community. Their findings would shape the future of aviation safety, highlighting the critical importance of clear communication and effective training in preventing such tragedies. Reflecting on the significance of this event in aviation history, it's clear that the crash of Kenya Airways Flight 431 was a pivotal moment. It was the deadliest involving the Airbus A310 and the deadliest in Ivory Coast history. For Kenya Airways, it marked their first fatal crash and remains their deadliest to date. 
This catastrophe left an indelible mark on the airline, prompting a rigorous review of their safety procedures. But perhaps the most profound impact of this tragedy was on the human level. For the passengers and crew who lost their lives, for the 10 survivors who endured unimaginable trauma, and for the families forever scarred by their loss. Each story is a poignant reminder of the fragility of life and the inherent risks of air travel. And yet, from this tragic event, lessons were learned, safety measures were enhanced, and the aviation industry was forever changed. It served as a stark reminder to airlines across the globe, prompting a renewed commitment to safety and vigilance. The tragic crash of Kenya Airways Flight 431 remains a grim reminder of the importance of aviation safety and the fragility of life.